Another great day here in uh, historic the city of Quincy, the city of presidents. Talk a little bit more about the further transformation of our Quincy Center, which uh, many of you know, many of you in this room have been involved with, uh, continues with this next phase. So really delighted today to have two partners here with me to talk about the projects going forward. Um, the first gentleman I'm gonna be speaking about, Sam Slater. Uh, you may have read a little bit. I know the playing department's familiar with him. He's, uh, he's underway with uh, permitting process for a 16-story building in the North Quincy area down by the old Domino's Pizza, uh, Burt's Electric, that area, uh, in a neighborhood that's certainly crying for investment. And uh, Sam has stepped up on that project. Uh, he's a managing partner of the Tremont Asset Management uh, Family Holdings, Slater Family Holdings. He's a major developer of the Back Bay and Brookline and part of the region. Uh, they have 3,500 multifamily residences across the region. He's a partner, the board member of the Seattle Kraken NHL expansion team. The Climate Pledge Arena will be the first net zero certified arena in the world. Sam's part of that project. He's also a uh, movie producer, not many know about that part of Sam's background. And uh, he's certainly become a major investor here in the city of Quincy with the $100 million building I just described in North Quincy. Joey Akari, uh, some of you may know Joey. Um, when I first met Joey, I was expecting an uh, Italian gentleman, but uh, I met a guy with a brogue. Uh, so, <laughs> never, you never know. Uh, but uh, Joey's the president of the Broadway Hospitality Group. Uh, really best known, really being so successful with the Tavern and the Square Hospitality Restaurant Group. They have 15 total restaurants. Uh, he's also into the real estate world with uh, developments in South Boston and the North Shore. Uh, and uh, Joey has uh, found an interest in the city of Quincy and we're delighted to have him with us. Uh, today we're talking about three major projects as part of this. Um, it's really this west side of the, of the Hancock Street. We've seen a lot of activity on the east side with the west of Chestnut, with Chestnut Place, uh, with 1500 Hancock, and of course the Kilroy Square and the Kilroy Garage. Uh, the Galvin, Sean Galvin's here, made the first foray in the west of of Hancock Street with the construction and the building, uh, the condominiums which sold quickly and, and I think you got a good, good number on them as I'm told, Sean, so we're glad about that. And as you know, we're building the, as we speak, we're building the new bridge and parks that can be dedicated to the generals uh, this September. So it's time for that side of Hancock Street uh, over to Bergen uh, to be developed. It's time to transform uh, that area. And that's what we're here to talk about today. So we're looking at uh, three buildings, about $300 million in investment, and that's private investment, uh, about 800,000 square feet of total retail entertainment and housing. And this is going to create almost 1,000 construction jobs and will have hundreds of permanent jobs over time. So specifically, the projects um, 1469, 1445 Hancock Street, uh, Mr. Slater is proposing a 15-story, 200-unit residential building, 8,000 square feet of restaurant, and uh, retail, um, 4,000 restaurant, 4,000 retail. Uh, it's what we know today is the arcade building. It's the long building across from Alva with the big windows on the second floor. Um, and Mr. Akari is on the other side uh, of two buildings in between. Uh, the uh, Family Dollar Store, Tom Fabrizio, that's where he does his Christmas shopping. Um, <laughs> so he, Sam is, uh, Joey has bought that building and he's pr proposing a seven-story building uh, with a two-story restaurant and housing units on top of that. So then between those two projects that both Sam and Joey are talking about, the City of Quincy is going to be moving forward with the City Council to purchase the two buildings in between. The Taekwondo building and the Donut, uh, donut to Donut, whatever that uh, other building is to the left of that one. Those buildings will come down. That'll be beautiful new green space. As you know, as we continue to develop the Quincy Center area, it's private investment and public investment. And uh, they work hand in hand. And as we've seen, the great response from the Hancock Adams Common, the Kilroy Square, and the new pocket parks throughout the Quincy Center area, it has been well received. And it really brings the downtown together. It uh, really connects it all in a, in a beautiful way. So we'll be looking at a brand new park, green space, on that location that will, of course, include uh, outdoor seating for both restaurants on each side of the park. It's going to be absolutely magnificent. And then the third piece that we're talking about today is the Messina lot, which is the empty corner at the corner. Hancock and Hannon currently uh, used as a parking lot um, for a number of years to make up for the interim parking. 
We've often talked about a major building on that corner, and uh, Sam will be talking a little bit about, more about that. That is another 14, 15 story building, 460,000 square feet on that corner. That building calls for something major, calls for a big building, there's no question about it. The exciting part of this is that uh, included in that building, and let me just say right up front, there's a lot of work to be done on this one. A lot of work to be done, both on the city side, the city's team, as well as Sam's team. And that is the construction of a performing arts center as part of that complex. As we've talked about uh, over the last year or two with Kunzi 400, the, the public that we've been out meeting with and surveying, uh, the most common response we've gotten over the last couple of years is looking for a venue, a performing arts type center, a cultural center. Uh, and I'm pleased to say today that uh, we've joined uh, with Sam and uh, we believe we're going to be able to pull this off at that location. Again, a lot of work to be done. A lot of financial experts, real estate experts and attorneys, Mahoney smiling back there somewhere, uh, going to be a lot of hours spent on this project, uh, no question about it. Very, very exciting times uh, for the city of Quincy. So with that, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to bring Sam up. Um, and uh, say a few words, talk a little bit more specifically about his projects, and then we'll hear from Joey, and then of course we'll take any questions at the end. See you later. New investor to our city of Quincy. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, appreciate that. Uh, good morning, uh, good morning everyone. I'm, first of all, I'm very happy to be here uh, in the city of Quincy, uh, and of course to be working uh, with Mayor Koch, um, the entire city and the community on a few projects that I think are adding to the impressive development that's already underway uh, here in the city. Uh, the mayor's long commitment to the downtown area has led Quincy from, from the depths of the you know, recession most recently, and, and of course keeping this momentum alive through the pandemic as we're coming out of that right now, hopefully. Um, with new office buildings in the works, a wave of residential uh, buildings as well, close proximity to transit, blossoming business community, beach access, golf courses, uh, an impressive culinary uh, scene here in the city, um, the mayor's vision has made Quincy one of the most desirable places to live, to be, and to do business in. Um, and for me, and for, for our group and our family, it's an honor to be here participating in that in some way. Um, so, thank you for that. Last year, we announced uh, our, our plans for our first project at 61 to 71 Hancock Street, uh, just off Neponset Ave. Um, this development will serve as, in our view, a gateway to the city from Boston, from 93, uh, and from that part of town, a symbol that big things are happening here in Quincy, um, and, and also in an area of the city that we think um, could benefit from some new uh, ideas and development. Um, when we were deciding on where next to develop, we were drawn immediately to downtown, which brings us to 1469 Hancock Street, um, the site of an existing building, but one that I think calls for something really special, given its location and, and given the fact that it is fairly underutilized today, uh, but will not be in the future. Um, plans for that building at 1469, which I believe is the, the one furthest to my right, the end, um, feature modern architecture, um, very bold architecture, around 200 sophisticated residential units uh, built with incredible best-in-class amenities, sustainable construction practices, um, and of course, very important to, to both us, the city, uh, and the folks here in Quincy, we're making sure that we activate the streetscape with this uh, particular project. So we're calling for a 4,000 foot restaurant that'll open up into the new park, um, at least 4,000 feet of retail on Hancock that can be programmed, frankly, however, is, is most beneficial to the area. Um, we're really excited about that. And again, uh, Cube 3's uh, incredible designs for the building really do a tremendous job of incorporating the new green space into the project, out onto the street, and blending with the area beautifully. Um, and, and I. Honestly, I applaud them for, for what they've done here. Uh, it's, it's tremendous. Um, moving on. So, in my view, people flock to cities for culture. 
right? And I think what the mayor's doing by taking the lead here on, on bringing a cultural center to Quincy is phenomenal and, and really applaud him for that. Um, outside of that, uh, I'm a movie enthusiast myself, as was mentioned, um, and also served a term on, uh, on the board of the Mass Cultural Council and, and do have passion and experience in the arts outside of real estate. So the opportunity to work on something like this is thrilling, uh, first of all. So we really look forward to working more with the city, with the community, on, on developing what this incredible building will look like and how it will be programmed more specifically and how the public will use it and access it. But we're, we're thrilled um, to be taking that on. Um, we're eager to hit the ground running on these new projects. Um, they're all underway. Uh, and we are just so excited. So, so thank you again, uh, Mayor, we appreciate it. Thank you to the city uh, and the incredible folks in Quincy. Thank you. Next, I'd uh, invite Joey Akari now to share a little bit about uh, his, his story. Uh, he's made his footprint really in South Boston uh, incredible restaurants that he's put together, and he's talking about a two-story restaurant here, uh, pretty remarkable. So Joey, welcome to Quincy. Good morning. Nice to meet everybody, and uh, that's a tough act to follow. Thanks, Sam. I didn't, uh, I didn't write anything down, but, so I'll keep it brief, but try and explain what we're trying to do here in this great city. Again, Mayor Koch, thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, City is very lucky to have a mayor like this guy because he's really progressive and he really wants to do great things. And we just want to be a, a small part of that. Um, you've got great developers coming in here like Sam, Fox Rock. And, you know, when, when I bought this property, this, this uh, development went from 15 stories up to 20 stories, back down to 15, and eventually ended at, at seven stories. And at the, at the same time, the most important thing for me you know, I'm a restaurant guy first, um, and a developer sort of second. The most important thing was to create density downtown and to bring people downtown. And what better is a great restaurant. And so we want to do something special here. And besides just a first story restaurant, we wanted to make it really, you know, big and inviting. And, um, you know, you can sort of see the windows all, all open up and uh, it really pours out into the new park. And again, as, as we sort of looked at this development and then the park idea came along, you know, the plans changed so that the restaurant sort of pours out into the park and then, you know, at Christmas time, maybe the park, you know, there's a Christmas tree here and it sort of becomes the center of town, you know, and so that's really important. Um, besides the, the first floor restaurant, first and second floor, on the second floor, we're also going to do a small co-working space. And again, that's to sort of drive people, you know, young people downtown, small offices, things like that. Um, so, you know, on the second floor, we could have anywhere from 20 to 80 people working there, along with the employees, probably another 80. And then, you know, on a, on a busy Friday night with two to 300 customers, you're talking about four or 500 people being drawn downtown into Quincy. And those people are gonna spend money in the other retails, they're gonna get haircuts, coffee, and um, really make Quincy Centre an exciting place to be. Um, so, first and second floor, and then above that, we've got sort of 40 units of residential. Um, and I think that Sam and Fox Rock and all these big developers, they've really got the residential side covered. Um, but again, we wanted to do something really interesting, something beautiful, and, um, and I think this is really gonna, this is really gonna create the centre of town in Quincy. And, um, Really happy to be here. Um, I'm really excited to be working along with Mayor Koch and his team, and uh, obviously with Sam and all these other developers. Um, looking forward to being a, a small part of the success story of Quincy. So thank you very much. A couple of notations on this, uh, one of which is between these projects and Quincy Center, we're looking at uh, pro approaching $2 million in new tax revenue to the city. When you add up the, uh, the real estate value, 
the meals tax, excise tax, uh, that's significant and that certainly will be a great addition uh, to the downtown diff district and continues to allow us to invest back into the downtown. And I should have mentioned, I have mentioned it in the past when we've talked about the cultural center, performing arts center, we'll, it will be named and dedicated to the first ladies in Quincy. Uh, we'll be honoring Abigail Adams and Louisa Catherine Adams uh, with that. And uh, what Sam has shown in his drawings is the the grand lobby opening up into that beautiful new green space as part of the park's construction of the honoring the generals. Uh, so it's really going to be a fitting, fitting entryway uh, to that building. So you see the pieces are coming together. Uh, it, it makes more sense as, as it gets built out from just being in the planning stage as we're looking at boards. And I should note that, uh, uh, again, we thank the Galvins, we thank Peter O'Connell, we thank LBC, we thank Quincy Mutual for their investment in getting the ball rolling. Uh, we're now seeing tremendous new investment coming into our city. Uh, we've seen Fox Rock now on the move at the hospital site. Uh, in the coming months, we'll be talking more about Fox Rock specifically on McConville Way. Uh, the, so west, of, west side of Hancock Street, on that edge of the tracks in Bergen Parkway, Fox Rock, as we know, is going to be building a medical office building and a hotel and residential building and a garage as well. So uh, it's going to be pretty robust for the next couple of years in downtown Quincy, but so exciting. I'm so grateful to Sam Slater and Joey Carey for their confidence in the city uh, and for their interest and in investing serious private dollars here in this great city. So with that, I'd be happy to open up to questions of any of us. Uh, gents want to come back up and anybody has any questions? Question. Scott. Is there going to be an affordable housing component to this project? We're actually building two projects in the downtown now that's going to be dealing with affordable workforce housing. Those are things that will be discussed as we go forward. Joe? Who would own and operate the Performing Arts Center? Joe's asked who will own and operate the Performing Arts Center, and that is one good question, Joe. We're still grappling with. There's a lot of detail. Uh, to this project. It's obviously a city-owned lot, so there'll be a land disposition agreement we'll be going to the city council with. Uh, we got a long way to go, uh, but the teams that are together to begin that process uh, with great minds uh, at the table, I'm sure we'll figure it all out. Anybody else? Um, is there going to be, is the city going to build parking for these new buildings? Or? Parking will be addressed uh, as, as designed in meeting the guidelines of Quincy Center, it will meet the uh, necessary parking requirements. Some will be on site, some will be off site. We're going to continue to build out additional parking in the downtown for all of the uses in the downtown. Particularly when we talk about a performing arts cultural center, there's no way the developer is going to be able to build that kind of parking on site. So we'll be dealing with uh, that issue uh, as part of that McConville Way area. Mary? Time, I'm sorry, Mayor. A timeline for submitting the proposals. Timeline for submitting the proposals. You guys want to take a crack at that? Um, you go first, and I have timelines. Well, so the, the Family Dollar Store, actually, their lease runs out uh, December 2022. Uh, but during that time, we're going to be working with our attorney, Dave Mahoney, uh, going through the whole process of getting everything permitted and stuff like that. So we hope to, I would say, we'd be putting a shovel in the ground probably February and March of 23, and probably a, it's a, we've got about an 18-month project ahead of us. Thank you. For, uh, for for these projects here, for the the one furthest to my right, 1469 Hancock, um, proposals uh, and work on the project are, are actually underway now, um, in in its early stages. Um, and just to give you a sense of, of sort of what we're anticipating, I would guess that um, we'd be looking to break ground in you know, Q1 or Q2 of, of 22. So it's a fairly uh, accelerated timeline given the size of that building, but um, it work is underway there. Have the current tenants been notified in those buildings? Obviously, Family Dollar you just addressed, but you know, the, the donut shop and the type of notice. Yes, they have been notified. Uh, and I would suggest that the timeline for both of these works pretty well. The goal would be the city acquire the pieces, the buildings come down, probably use that space for staging area for both of these projects, and then create the park as the last piece. Anybody else? Um, 
roughly how many units would be above the performing arts on a residential? Do you want to tackle that one? Sure. You repeat the question. Yeah, I'll repeat the question. Uh, the question was uh, approximately how many units will be above the Performing Arts Center. And, and I'll, I'll first say that we're early in, in planning what the interior programming of the building will be. You know, given the needs for this Performing Arts Center to be versatile and to accommodate a host of events, whether it's live broadcast, whether it's a musical or a play or a community event or a school graduation or whatever it may be, um, there's a lot that we're doing research-wise, frankly, to make sure that it is uh, able to meet uh, the moment for whatever that is in that building. That said, ab above it, we're, we're looking at right now uh, somewhere in, in the order of, of, say, 350 plus or minus uh, residential units. Um, it will change. Uh, it will change, but that's what it looks like currently. Uh, and by the way, to, to my housing critics out there, I want to remind everybody that the metropolitan Boston area is way behind on the needed units going forward. Uh, you know, the, the economy of Boston is heavily based on education and medical, and a lot of young people come to this region, they need a place to live. And that's a challenge right now. So we're helping to meet that demand, number one. Number two is, we've said from day one with the master planning of Quincy Center that we're creating a new neighborhood that we're gonna have a 24 seven neighborhood down here, not this old days of, of uh, you know, five o'clock, the carpets rolled up and the exception of Alva and a couple other restaurants, there wasn't much happening here. This creates new vitality, new vibrancy, creates new jobs, it creates new taxes, and it's on the spine of the tracks. We're right by the Quincy Center Red Line Station, which is all about transportation oriented development. So it checks a number of the boxes off why it makes perfect sense. This is where we want density. This is where we want height. This is the center of commerce for our city. This isn't in the, in the middle of a neighborhood, and I understand some of the concerns with development in different parts of the city. The city is extremely attractive right now, and that is an incredible compliment to our school system, to our police and fire, libraries, parks, DPW. It's an incredible city. People want to be here. So we're taking full advantage of that in the marketplace. Uh, so I wanted to say that because I know what's coming. Any other questions? It might be too early at this point, but are they going to be, the units going to be um, apartments or condos? Probably too early, Scott. The question was apartments or unit uh, condos, so we'll get into that a little bit later. Well, we, ha we have a little bit of work ahead of us. Joe, I'm sorry. I wonder what type of restaurants, uh, Mr. Uh, what type of restaurant? Um, Basically, it's going to be a, a, an American tavern, uh, eclectic menu, sort of a, a restaurant for, for everybody. As the, you know, there'll be a lunch crowd, dinner crowd where families can, you know, can enjoy it too. And as the, as the night gets later, you know, probably a younger crowd settles in there. So, but it'll really be opening and inviting for, for everybody. So, yeah. Want to come on, yeah, potential restaurant? Feel the spot. I was asked to comment on our potential restaurant, and unfortunately, my skills do not translate into uh, the culinary space. So I would look to you, Joey, for some assistance in programming our restaurant space. <laughs> I guess I'll just say, you know, again, with Sam's restaurant, and I'm a true believer in, even though we're opening a big restaurant here, I want somebody to open a great restaurant across the way in Sam's building, too. We need, it's not gonna take, you know, one or two good restaurants, it's gonna take five or six or seven. And that's already happening. Um, so I would probably, if Sam was going to rent it at a reasonable rate, maybe I would probably think maybe a, a Mexican type restaurant. Anyway. <laughs> Thank you. There we go. Can't have too many restaurants. Look at the North End, right? <laughs> well, I appreciate everybody coming today. I know a lot of my team is in the room. We've got a lot of work to do, folks, uh, but it's an exciting time. I do want to acknowledge uh, Tim Cahill. Uh, the president of the Quincy Chamber of Commerce, and I know we'll be working side by side with the chamber going forward as we do on a number of projects. So thank you everybody for being here. Enjoy the rest of this beautiful day. Thanks, guys.